Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes is... Nunez! Darwin Nunez. Nunez has been made into somewhat of a joke since joining Liverpool, being nicknamed Captain Chaos and labelled one of the worst finishers in the league. Former Liverpool coach Rafa Benitez, when comparing Nunez and Torres, said that the two are very similar and that Torres used to miss chances too. Fernando, one of the issues at the beginning was that he was not a great finisher. Little by little, because he was in front of the keeper so many times, he could have more time and more composure. However, Nunez is now turning this around and is finding some form. And when he is in form and his confidence is high, he is lethal and will be key in Liverpool's Premier League title charge. But first, we have to go back to the beginning. For Darwin, the odds have always been stacked against him. The Uruguayan striker was born on June 24, 1999 in Artigas, one of the poorest parts of Uruguay. Nunez's parents didn't have any money. His mother hawked milk bottles while his father worked in construction. Mealtimes were difficult in the Nunez household, with the footballer's parents going hungry so they could feed him and his brother. Their situation wasn't helped by the fact that the family had to constantly spend on their home as it was always affected by floods. Nunez found escape by playing football. He played for the local club La Luz and was part of the youth academy of the local team San Miguel de Artigas until he was 14. Former Uruguay international Jose Podomo saw him play and made him have trials for one of the most historic Uruguayan clubs Peñarol. Nunez passed the trials, but his newfound success brought with it some mixed feelings. The 14-year-old had to leave home and stay in the capital city, Montevideo, by himself so he could join Peñarol's academy. The player moved to the capital, where he lost almost everything. Nunez just couldn't settle. He began to feel homesick and missed his family very badly. Peñarol saw how their talent was struggling and decided to let him return to San Miguel de Artigas, his former team, so that he could be closer to his parents. Nunez had to return to the city and he did so after a year. His parents promised to see him more often and his brother was also asked to join Peñarol's academy. After his return to Peñarol the second time, well, the player was excellent. He trained together with his brother and massively improved the team. Then, just as he was about to reach a critical point in his progression, it happened. Nunez suffered a severe ACL injury. His dream of becoming a footballer turned to ashes before his eyes. His brother said no, you're better suited than me, he said, and gave up everything as he quit football to get a job that would help him provide for the family, including his injured brother. According to the doctors, Nunez would recover fully in six months. However, the striker suffered different setbacks. He finally went for surgery in February to help his healing process, but it was tough for him. Nunez was depressed. He started to feel like he wasn't good enough. Then he made a decision. The Uruguayan striker decided he was done with football. The emotional baggage that came with his injury that refused to go away was just too much. He needed to find a way to provide for his family just as his brother did. His coaches at Peñarol stood by him and encouraged him. Eventually, Nunez decided to continue playing football, but it took him a full 18 months to fully heal. The Uruguayan returned to football in November 2017 after debuting for Peñarol, but his ACL flared up again and Nunez had to do another surgery. But after this surgery, the striker strung a couple of fantastic performances together. Those performances earned him a transfer to Spanish second division club Almeria, who bought him for a club record fee in the summer of 2019. The footballer's journey to international greatness had finally begun. Nunez didn't spend long adapting. He got straight to action and helped Almeria achieve a much coveted promotion to La Liga, scoring 16 goals in 32 appearances. Nunez, however, wouldn't follow Almeria to La Liga. He had become one of the most sought-after young strikers, with European giants RB Leipzig, Benfica and Napoli all trying to sign him. Even Southampton and Brighton were competing for his signature. Nunez chose Benfica in 2020 and they paid a reported club record fee of 24 million euros to secure his signature, making him the most expensive signing in the history of the Portuguese league. 
After making his debut for Benfica in September in the Champions League, the Uruguayan striker had knee troubles again. However, after he returned, he was off to a flying start, providing five assists in his first four league games. Nunez opened his scoring for Benfica with a hat-trick in October and scored some more before getting Covid. After recovering, the player suffered injuries that prevented him from building consistency. Eventually, he closed the season with six league goals and ten assists. He then went to have surgery again as he got injured in his right knee. The rehabilitation made Nunez miss the early parts of the season and when he returned, the Uruguayan transformed. He became a goal-scoring and assist-making machine. He was too hot to handle both in Portugal and in Europe. Nunez continued to impress with his performances and showed he could be the man for the big occasion. When Benfica met Liverpool in the quarter-final of the 2021-22 Champs League, he was a thorn in their side. The player scored two of Benfica's four goals in aggregate, and he would have had more if two of his goals hadn't been ruled out for offside. With that performance, Nunez made an impression. He just didn't know it yet. At that point, his next destination in club football had been all but decided. Jurgen Klopp fell in love with Nunez after his performance against Liverpool, and he encouraged the club to make the striker their main target for the 2022-23 season. Klopp's pushing for Nunez was justified as the striker ended the season scoring 34 goals and providing four assists, and he left the club with 48 goals in 85 appearances. The Portuguese club wouldn't keep the Uruguayan striker past the 2021-22 season with Benfica as Liverpool offered them a club record £85 million total package deal for his signature. After his transfer to Liverpool, Liverpool echoed the same thing. Could he be the new Fernando Torres? Yes, and we'll show you how. When Nunez debuted for Liverpool, he did it in style. His performance in that match, which was the FA Community Shield against Manchester City, showed that he has a lot of promise for Liverpool. Nunez won a penalty, which Mohamed Salah scored and also scored a header in the dying minutes of the match. When the season began, Nunez quickly got his debut goal and showed other skill sets that marked him as an all-round striker, not just a goal scorer. However, as brilliant as he was in the opening stages of the season, one thing became increasingly clear. Nunez was still raw and hadn't adapted to the demands of English football. Nunez missed chance upon chance and allowed opponents to get into his head. He got sent off for violent conduct in a one-all home draw against Crystal Palace when he headbutted opponent Joachim Anderson. Apart from the misses and susceptibility to provocation, Nunez didn't understand how Liverpool played and found the English language very difficult. Liverpool's coach called Nunez being like a racehorse because the player was just too eager. The Uruguayan striker didn't understand Liverpool's press triggers. He ran without following tactics, thereby opening Liverpool up. However, despite the misses and lack of technical understanding, Nunez didn't stop trying. He continued to get involved and remained a constant threat. His efforts earned him Liverpool Player of the Month for December. Liverpool being poor that season didn't help Nunez and neither did his English skills, but still he scored 15 goals in 42 appearances for the club. In the 2023-24 season, Nunez continued his streak of scoring and missing badly, earning him the title of Captain Chaos, as we never quite knew what he was going to do when he stepped out on the pitch. However, he continued to improve, and even when Salah was unavailable, Nunez's goals allowed Liverpool to continue their momentum. Nunez wouldn't be the only Liverpool striker that would begin their Liverpool career by missing easy goals. Fernando Torres was also the same way for them. Rafa Benitez revealed that when Liverpool bought Torres, he wasn't a great finisher. However, Torres shared an attitude with Nunez. Benitez revealed that, like Torres, Nunez could continue to get into dangerous areas with his ability to run in behind. The former Liverpool coach claimed that with that type of ability, the coaches of other teams will always be worried about Nunez, just like they were about Torres. Eventually, Torres became a lethal striker for Liverpool, and Nunez could become that for Liverpool, we are sure of it. Benitez is onto something with his comparison, but there's more. Apart from their electric ability on the ball, the two strikers run on confidence. When they're high on confidence, they perform excellently well and are huge assets for their clubs. But when they're low on confidence, 
they can miss a simple tap into an empty net that you and I could even score maybe. Just remember Torres at Chelsea. Some of those misses were truly terrible when he first started, when he was more tentative. However, luckily they both have pace, good passing ability and excellent ability to dribble. So they offer so much more than just goals. Did you know that as of December 2023, Nunez had 42.11% more successful dribbles than Salah's 30.61%. So it looks like Liverpool will be safe when Salah leaves the club. Do you think Nunez is ready for that kind of responsibility though? I mean, will he shine just as Torres did when he was the main man for Liverpool? Let us know what you think in the comments.